folks, so we okay. I'm at Test Goals in Middleton. And uh, I want to talk about John Knox. And uh, what an inspiration he is. Well, where to begin? I can't remember all the dates and facts and and what have you, so forgive me. But I just want to talk about this man. He was guy who actually was a bodyguard of a, a preacher who would go around preaching around Scotland I can't remember the preacher's name but this preacher was quite famous because in uh, I think it's Dundee there was the plague and the people of Dundee were not allowed to leave and this preacher went to preach to the people of Dundee on the outskirts and John Knox would accompany the preacher and protect the preacher, etc. So John Knox learnt a lot about preaching from this particular preacher whose name I can't, can't remember. <clears throat> Anyhow, the guy, this preacher who preached to the people who had the plague eventually got arrested and killed and um, Later on, uh, as things developed in Scotland, uh, St Andrew's Castle was taken over by the Protestants and they wanted uh, John Knox to be the minister there. And he, and he wasn't that particularly educated or didn't think he was that great uh, uh, of a preacher himself. And uh, he fasted and prayed and he accepted the call, he became a minister. Uh, that castle uh, was taken and uh, by French forces and John Knox was was uh, put in prison uh, sorry he was sold as a slave to the gallows which was basically a death sentence and even when he was in the ship and he was emaciated one of his friends in the ship uh, said look there's St Andrews and he looks he said one day I'll be back there preaching so he spent quite a number of years in the gallows and he was absolutely uh, emaciated and then there was somebody at court in England who who was uh, I can't remember the specific individuals um, but he uh, the court was the protectorate of the young king. There was a young king, uh, only a few years old. And um, he did a deal, this protectorate, with the French authorities to get um, John Knox back. So John Knox got back and uh, got his strength back after several months. Still not very well over the years. But he became the leader of the Scottish Reformation. And the point that I want to get hold of is that his preaching shook the nation. His preaching was so powerful that even the Queen of the time in Scotland, I think uh, Queen Mary, even she, she would cry, she would shake, she said she feared his preaching more than she feared an army. And I just want to say, where are the leaders like that today? We need John Knox's today. Where are the men of principle that can shake a nation like John Knox? He didn't use an army in one sense. He shook the nation up because of the preaching of the Word of God. The other thing about John Knox is he, 
he, he's had the biggest influence, I think, on democracy. He actually wrote some books where he was advocating that the power of is in the people and in the office. Whereas before it was the divine right of kings. It didn't matter whether the king had office or not, if he was the king he had the power. <coughs> and it was arbitrary above the law. But John Knox was saying, no, the law is the authority and that everybody's equal uh, in the law. <coughs> and this was the basis of Western democracy. It influenced Samuel Rutherford, who, who wrote Lex Rex, which was probably one of the most influential books in, on development of democracy. Um, so basically, the bottom line is John Knox, a preacher of the gospel, had a massive impact in Scotland and a massive impact on Western culture. And the sad thing is, we don't even celebrate it, not even in Scotland, not even in Great Britain, about this guy who had such a massive impact on our Western culture. And where, where are the preachers like John Knox? Where are the preachers like John Knox? Where are the men that, that thunder the gospel and shake the nation? Um, I think one of the big problems that I found reading, listening to, studying John Knox is how he was, he was a big advocate. He was a big advocate of the state not being involved in the church, that there was a king of the nation and then there was the king of the church, Jesus. And I think that is something that we should value today that the church is independent of the state. The church has a king and his name is Jesus. And, and But the sad thing is, is in our Western culture, the church, the church is not standing up for the word of God. And standing up against uh, secular culture. So, in, uh, basically, what I'm trying to say is, is that, you know, in time of John Knox, the the church, it was very clear it, from his perspective that there was the state and the church, and they were separate. Today, the church has become so worldly; it's not standing up against the state. It's not saying actually Christ is King, and we're going to stand with Him but they're giving in to secular culture. Just my thoughts. Take care and God bless you.